This video was made for a Patreon request from Buck Reviews. Thank you so much for your support, it really, really means a lot. Disclaimer, this series revolves around criticising things, and the fact that I'm doing that doesn't necessarily mean I dislike the thing. Thank you! Click below to watch the original Sins video, or to buy Jumanji. Man, they sure did go all in on the make the kids look dirty makeup. Did they dig that hole with their faces? Yes, absolutely. It's completely unreasonable that these kids who just dug a six foot hole in a hurry should have some dirt on their faces. <laughs> These bat holes wait to attack Sarah until after Alan's turn, and after he's sucked into the game. Probably because they've been trained in cinematic timing. Bat holes. Also, all of the threats that Jumanji presents do take a while to appear. In fact, later on you make the complaint that if they just rolled the dice quick enough, they could probably make it through the entire game before even a threat showed up. So this here is just consistency. Yeah, they're terrifying and definitely a nuisance, but these bats aren't doing jack to Sarah except flying around. Maybe they're trying to teach her about becoming a symbol of hope to a crime-riddled city or something like that. This bat hole, that bat hole. Damn it, movie! You just showed the year on the first two time periods, but now you're expecting me to do math and figure out what the date is? I was told there would be no f***ing math! The part where this in falls flat is the part where you realize that knowing the date isn't at all important to enjoying this film. That's an African bat. Some kid said you saw a bunch of those back in the 60s. Really moving? 26 years later and a random expositional exterminator happens to remember some kid saying she saw the same kind of bat? What's worse is that it's not even exposition we need. Also, if the bat that Peter saw was one of the ones Sarah saw back in 1969, how is that bat still alive 26 years later? The average lifespan of a bat is 30 years. It's probably just one of those animal facts that you should Google, you know, inst instead of just assuming, like what a rhino's horn is made out of. Notice how Monopoly is at the bottom of the other stack. That's because Monopoly, much like Jumanji, tears people's lives apart. Speaking of Monopoly, I believe it's Jeremy who has a Monopoly on commonly not sending things properly, and instead in his commentary he compares things sloppily as an attempt at comedy. Back in 1869, they had to bury the f*** out of this game to prevent it from endangering anyone else. But it's been hanging out up here for 26 years without any problem until now. The movie has led us to believe that this house has been abandoned since then, so nobody stumbling across the game isn't ridiculous. Burying the game was a way to make sure that no one found it again, but if no one happens to find it anyway, then that will have the same effect. <laughs> Let's bring it over here. Sure, it's a cool box, but there's no way the kids would know that this game is the source of the drumming noise that terrified them mere moments ago. The drums got louder the closer to it they got, and then stopped immediately after they found it. I feel like the kids would have to be pretty dense to not at least have an inkling that the two are somehow connected. Those mosquitoes are the size of birds. If the bats are genuine African bats, and later we see other real animals, why do the mosquitoes get the growth hormones when the others don't? It's not just the mosquitoes that are much larger than their real life counterparts. Later on, we see carnivorous plants so large they're able to eat people and giant spiders. Sure, it's not exactly consistent. I'd argue that from a game design point of view that this is to do with balance rather than anything else. But the one thing that does appear to be consistent is that the animals only deviate from their real life counterparts if they're not dangerous enough in real life to pose a threat. This is also consistent with the monkeys being apparently smarter than they are in real life and also antagonistic assholes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, f*** these murderous, marauding monkeys, man. Pretty sure that's how you're supposed to feel at this point, but okay. Where's my mom and dad? This house has been empty for years. Wait, this isn't a big leg situation where Alan wakes up as a grown man. He's been living inside the game for 26 years and could clearly note the passage of time. Sure, he'd be looking for his parents when he came back, but he would totally know that it's been a long while since he left. There's nothing here to lead us to believe that Alan doesn't realize that. In fact, one of the first things we see him do when he gets out is try to figure out how long it's been. Which, you know, would kind of suggest to me that he does in fact know it's been a long time. Especially since when he finds out it's been 26 years, he doesn't go, What? 26 years? That's ridiculous. I thought I was only in there for a few minutes. Ah, I just looked in the mirror and realized I'm an adult. How did this happen? What's going on? And what's your evidence to the contrary? The fact that he's looking for his parents in the last place he knew his parents lived? Go home, Jeremy. Unless you are home. In which case, I don't know, stay there, I guess. Looks like Alan never outgrew his running out into a busy street without looking habit. This sin seems pretty reasonable until he realizes it's the first time Alan has run out into a busy street without looking. <laughs> he can't get his finger. He can't get through the glass. Is Alan a seasoned vet at fighting all the creatures in the game, or is he this comic relief? He was a badass when facing down the lion earlier, but now he's freaked out about a f***ing bug? We literally just saw a woman hospitalized because of a mosquito bite. It seems like their bites make people sick. Sure, he faced down a lion, and that was badass. But this is a very different nature of threat. It's definitely not something you can just stare down. You certainly can't be comparing this to the lion by going, Oh, it's, it's just a bug. Well, no, technically you can, and you would be right. But that would probably be a bit over-dismissive of something that can pretty much kill you in one bite. 
Realtor lady's car keys were left in the ignition and her car in the middle of the road. Did the guys in the ambulance call for any kind of backup to get the wreck cleared away? Or do a few giant mosquitoes get the same martial law treatment as a zombie apocalypse? As they're carrying away Mrs. Thomas, the paramedics say that there have been over 50 victims of the mosquito bites. Yeah, it's another one, all right. Jeez, it's over 50. This is just within a few hours, and the bites look like they're causing serious problems. If anything is worthy of, fuck it, we're busy, let's just leave the car on the road status, this is it. On top of that, they stole the car immediately after the paramedics left. So even if they did call someone in to get the car, that wouldn't have mattered at all because they wouldn't have had a chance to get it. Harvest time! Wait, that's it? They just had to free Peter from the one pod in the vine system to get out of the immediate danger? What the hell are the actual rules for this game? In one roll, you can get just a brief but ultimately harmless vegetation attack, and in the next one, you're banished to the jungle for 26 years? I mean, yeah, games based entirely on RNG are basically all bullshit. Shut up, that doesn't count. Although on the other hand, Jumanji isn't anywhere near as bad as he seemed to be making it out to be. The vine attack could have killed Peter if Alan wasn't there with a convenient sword to save him. And conversely, in the beginning, if Sarah had just rolled the dice and carried on playing the game instead of running away, Alan could have been stuck in the jungle for a grand total of five minutes. The huge difference in results here aren't inherent to what the game is dishing out. Instead, it's a result of how the players responded to the threats. Oh my god! My car! How long has Carl been looking for his cruiser? Alan and the kids have gone to the factory, discovered his parents are dead, stolen a car, taken a nap, went through the lecture about how dangerous this shit is, went to find Sarah, kidnapped her, and then fought the magical vine. But Carl's just now finding his car? This scene implies that Carl has literally just been looking for his car. When various jungle animals of varying degrees of deadliness have been unleashed on a small town, I think that the day of a life of a policeman in that town might be a little bit on the busy side. Even if he's not being called out to deal with anything, as he walks around the town, he's gonna find loads of people that need help. Everyone in this town has called me crazy ever since I told the cops that you were sucked into a board game. So you changed your last name and didn't leave town? And didn't change houses either? And while we're at it, are you even a real psychic? If you are, surely you would have predicted this. And you didn't. Real psychics don't exist. But you know what? Magical board games that summon jungle animals also don't exist. Never mind. Alan, you wrestled an alligator for me. It's a crocodile. Alligators don't have that little fringe on the handling. Rather than kiss the love interest, Alan chooses to mansplain the difference between alligators and crocodiles. I'm not going to pretend for a second that I'm not being a hypocrite here, but there is some background noise in that scene. It sounds like someone is doing something, or something. I don't know, I can't really tell what it is. Also, Alan's been isolated for 26 years. It's completely understandable that he's not quite ready to kiss someone just yet. Also, it kind of feels like the movie is suggesting that Alan knows the difference between alligators and crocodiles because he's spent so much time in the jungle. And if that is the case, I'd just like to remind the movie briefly that if you're in the jungle, the animals aren't labelled. But you know what? There's still a chance Alan knew that anyway before he got sucked into the game, so I'm going to give the movie the benefit of the doubt here. And I'm not going to itemist sin. Despite the water being everywhere in the house, this room is bone dry. This is the attic. It's above where the water was. Why are they giant? Make up your mind, game. Actual animals or monster versions. It seems like the game buffs animals animals that it doesn't deem to be dangerous enough on their own, and that's okay. Oh great gravy on mashed potato mountain. Time travel? Movie can't even handle the rules of its own game, let alone the complexity that goes along with resetting a time lock. Actually, I'd say that the movie does both of those things perfectly adequately, especially since if the movie made any mistakes in how it handled its time travel, you would probably have pointed them out specifically. I swear to God, if Dwayne Johnson isn't wearing a beret and eating croissants in the sequel, I'm calling bullshit. Not gonna lie, I, I also would have very much liked to have seen that. I think it's one of the few things that drastically could have improved Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. So here's a sin off, just for putting that brilliant image in my mind. So the sin total was 22 sins. But you know what? There were quite a few really good sins in this one. No individual sin that was good enough for me to go, ha, I'm gonna take a sin off for that one sin. I mean, except kind of the last one, I guess. But I feel like just in a general sense, this one was above standard for normal cinema sins videos. So I'm gonna take off an extra sin here. Other than that, I would just like to let people know that I'm going to be slowing down my rate of making videos just for a while, not permanently. And that's because I feel like making three videos a week, every week for this long, has just started to show a decline in quality. Most notably on my recent video on Black Panther and Unbridled Rage. I don't think that that video is up to my normal standard, and I think that my upload schedule has got a lot to do with that. So I'm just going to lighten my workload for a while until I get back into the swing of things. Oh, and while we're on the topic of the Black Panther and Unbridled Rage video, because I've decided I don't like part one very much, I'm not going to be uploading part two this Sunday. I'm probably going to be uploading parts one and two together as one big thing next Sunday, and I'm going to drastically change some of the things that I thought were problems with part one. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, there's a playlist on screen of all my Sin Sins videos, along with a video that's been specifically chosen just for you by YouTube's super, super smart algorithms. Also, the original Sins video, if you want to fact check me, or if you just want to watch it.
I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you on Sunday. A goodbye.